depending on where you are watching from. Um, I will tell you, before I carry on, before I even start the video, that I am recovering from a chest infection and a head cold. So if I cough, then I apologise. I've got a glass of water somewhere, just in case. Um, but hopefully I won't because I'm over the worst of it. So I haven't been live for two weeks. So the first week we were away for a few days. That's when I got ill, when we were away. Predictable, isn't it? But anyway, it always happens, doesn't it, when you have a few days off. So we were away that week and then last week I was just not well. So I didn't go live because I didn't want to have a coughing fit on on camera because that's that's interesting isn't it in, it's an interesting look we're going for today Connie um so yeah I didn't want to have a coughing fit live I can't I need to get that out of the way now because I can't not see it um so I'm back I'm back today after two weeks off so hello welcome to the Dixie Bell YouTube channel I am Connie I am a furniture painter that's my full-time job I am also a brand ambassador for Dixie Bell Paint. So if you haven't seen me before, you'll likely see me again. Um, good morning, Valerie. And yeah, it's two o'clock here in the afternoon in the UK, because that's where I'm based, if you can't tell from my accent. Um, so I know a lot of you are tuning in from overseas and it's quite early in the morning. So I appreciate you tuning in and saying hi. So every week I come live on the Dixie Bells YouTube channel and do something with paint or a Dixie Bell product. Not necessarily paint because today is not going to be paint. That door is banging. It's a really nice day today. It's quite sunny but it's quite windy and I've opened the doors to my workshop and one of them is just banging against the fence so if you hear that in the background I apologize um so today I'm not going to paint I'm going to do something that I did see in one of the comments from a few weeks ago somebody said can you show us how to shade with waxing dark wax and I'm like yes I can because if you do watch me and if you have seen any of my content you'll know that wax is one of my favorite things to play with I absolutely love me some wax and that's mainly because I like the effects you can create with it and I just find it really easy to to use top coats are a little bit of my not my personal nemesis but a lot of people struggle with them and they also sit on top of the, the paint finish they're great for protection don't get me wrong they are fully required on some pieces but wax brings something special to a piece in my opinion and not just for added you know added protection or whatever you can create loads and loads of different effects with waxes so in the dixie bell wax range you have best dang wax so this is what i use the most and it's kind of as you would imagine a wax to look like it's like a solid kind of wax the difference is this isn't an oil-based wax it's actually a water-based wax so that means that it's a little bit more versatile than some other brands and also you can top coat over this so usually when you're using an oil-based wax it has to be the last thing that you do because anything water-based won't sit over the top whereas this you don't have to make it the last thing that you do. So if you did want to add a decorative effect with wax, you can then top coat over the top for a little bit of added protection, durability, whatever. So it's super versatile. And in the Best Down Wax range, they have clear, which actually looks white in the tub, but it's not. It goes on, it even comes out a little bit kind of white. Um, but it goes on and it goes on clear. So that's clear. They also have brown, grey, black and white. And you can use a combination of those things. You can use them together. You can use them on their own. You can use them with clear. I'm going to show you the most common way that I shade with wax to give your piece a little bit of dimension, basically. And I have just literally this morning 
added a video onto my own YouTube channel, which is Faf Designs, if you search for that on YouTube, where I have used Best Dang Wax over a piece to give dimension. So the legs, it's actually this piece down here underneath this drop cloth. Um, the legs have got quite a lot of detail on them and it's added a lot of age and it's also added a lot of kind of three-dimensional look. Although they are actually three-dimensional, when you paint with one colour, you can kind of just make a piece look flat. Whereas if you use a little bit of wax to add some dimension, it kind of brings it to life again. And there are lots of products that you can do this with in the Dixabel range. Wax is just one of them. So you can also use glaze. Um, you can also use a paint wash. If you don't have these kind of extra decorative kind of things and you don't want to sort of shell out on them you can use a similar kind of you can get a similar effect with other other things so you've got glaze you've got a paint wash you can also use dixie dirt um there's loads and loads of different ways that you can add a little bit of just something dimension wise to your piece so i'm not going to show you on a piece of furniture what i've got today is a pair of candlesticks these were just picked up from a charity shop I think they were a couple of quid and they were like a factory finished kind of, I think they were like a black distressed look. Not, not a vibe, not great at all. So I have, can you shade with wax on Dixabelle metallic paint? You can. The problem is with metallic paint, obviously you want it to be metallic-y. So when you add wax on, you might kind of lose a little bit of that shimmer because obviously you're putting a product over the top of that shimmer. So you may just, if you wanted just to do it kind of around the edges, just to create like dimension, but you will obviously, because you're putting something over the top, you will kind of lose that shimmery, metallic -y look. But that goes for everything. It's, it's obviously a coloured wax is gonna, <coughs> is gonna alter the colour of the thing that you put it over the top of. So here's that cough coming back. Bear with me a second, let me just have a sip of water. Okay, water tastes weird. Um, so I'm gonna show you the most common way that I use wax. So I'm gonna start off with clear. So this is, this is antebellum blue, chalk mineral paint. Nothing else done to it. I've just put two coats on these candlesticks. So what you could do is just go straight in with your colored wax and create some dimension. However, if you've painted with chalk mineral paint, what you'll notice is it's a matte finish and it's quite chalky. And what tends to happen with dark wax or any colored wax that you put on this, I'm gonna keep saying dark wax because that's what I'm using today, I'm using brown. If you went straight in over the top of this with your brown wax, this paint grips it, it grips it. And if you make a mistake, or you want to wipe some back, which I often do, just to control where you've put it and leave it in areas like this, then it's going to make it harder for you. So if you give this a coat first of something else, and I say something else because you can use various different things, if you give this a top coat first, then you will get way more control over the application of your coloured wax. So you can top coat this with any clear coat or gator hide and that will act as a barrier between your chalk mineral paint and your coloured wax. You can also use clear wax for that barrier. You can also use easy peasy spray wax as a barrier. I'm using clear wax because it's going to give me a nice sheen. Easy peasy spray wax is more of a matte finish and if I top coat this now obviously then we've got to wait for it to dry. We don't have to do that with clear wax. So I'm going to use clear wax. And this is, the, like I say, the most common kind of technique that I do. So to put my clear wax on, I've actually got one of these. It depends on the surface that I'm applying wax on as to what I use. If I'm waxing a really flat surface, I'll actually use a blue applicator sponge, which I haven't got to hand. But they're a Dixabell product and it's a small round sponge. And I just find that it applies wax streak free a really thin even coat on a flat surface perfectly personal preference not everybody uses them i just prefer them you can also use a brush 
traditionally speaking, you'd use a natural bristle brush because it just holds onto the product and distributes it better. If you try to use a synthetic brush, it just clogs the bristles up and it doesn't really kind of, it doesn't lay the product down how it should do. So traditionally speaking, you'd use a natural bristle brush for waxing. This is a brand new brush and the reason I've got a tapered end, this one's called the Lapetite. The reason I've got this is because it's got that point on the end and if you see I've got lots of kind of detail and that point is just going to help me get all in that detail without gunking it all up and having too much product sat there. So all I am going to do is get some clear wax on my brush, make sure your brush is dry, <coughs> excuse me. Make sure your brush is dry. You don't need any any damp on your brush at all. And then you just literally paint it on um, and just distribute it evenly over. You might find that it kind of goes a little bit hazy or milky when you first apply it, <clears throat> but that will, that will go. That's just with the clear, because obviously when you get it out of the tub, it does have that kind of white look to it. So when you first put it on, you might think, ah, oh, it's white. It's not. When you start to move that around on the surface, you'll see that it kind of melt. It starts to like melt in. And here's a tip for you. If you are in a cold climate or you paint in a cold area and you find that your wax is like kind of, sort of not did not sort of melting into the paint as it should or melting into the surface just um can you hear the peacocks in the background <laughs> that's what the weird noise is i haven't got a child on the loose in my garden um just hold your hair dryer over the surface just warm it up a little bit in the tub and that will help it kind of be distributed over the surface so it's super easy to do waxing it is that's why I like it, because it's easy. And I'm for, all for an easy life. Um, so you can't really get it wrong. You can't, you can't get waxing wrong. If you put too much on, you can just take it off. You can just move it around on the surface. Worst case scenario, you can get a microfiber cloth, just give it a rub, and that will take any, any kind of excess wax off. So you want to make sure you've got a nice, thin, even coat. And waxing is actually the most traditional way of sealing chalk paint. Um, not that Dixie Bell chalk mineral paint has to be sealed. It's very durable without a top coat. But most people do add some kind of top coat because it's um, obviously it's super matte. The finish is quite matte. And again, it just adds a little bit more protection to that painted surface. But waxing is, is one of the most traditional traditional kind of ways of, of finishing a chalk paint off, a chalk, chalk painted piece off. Got some shedding with my brush, which is brand new. I should have washed it first, but I didn't. Now can you hear the peacocks? Oh, thank you, Irene, thank you. I, I try. I know that sometimes I can be like a bull in a china shop and just steam straight in and expect people to know exactly what I'm doing and what I'm talking about. But I also don't want to talk to people like they're idiots. I am fully aware that there's some very professional and advanced painters that are on this channel as well. Um, that probably are better painters than me, to be honest. I'm not the best painter in the world. Um, hello, Amber. Hello, what are you doing? You should be at work. Why aren't you not at work? Um, so, one thin coat is plenty. Um, can you wax the seat of a chair or use another sealer? So, okay, that, that leads me on to a, a great, it's a great question. So, is wax appropriate for every single project? Oh, she's got the week off, hasn't she? She's got a week off. Amber. Come round, I've got lots to do. I've got lots of work to do. You can give me a hand. Um, is wax appropriate for every project? No, it isn't. I wish it was, 
but it isn't. So that's why top coats is this. That's why there's so many top coats that are out there. Wax is beautiful. Wax gives, I mean, look at that sheen. Isn't she, isn't she delightful? It's lovely as it is. Wax is great for more decorative pieces. If your piece is going to have liquids or cosmetic products or high traffic, then is wax the best thing for that piece? Probably not. And a little bit of that is knowing about the use that your furniture is going to get. So if somebody came to me and asked, hi, Sandy, you got me, you got me on a live. Excuse peacocks in the background. They're very noisy today. Um, if somebody came to me and asked if they could wax the top of their dining table, I would ask, how much use does it get? Do you have children? And those kind of things. If they are, if they've got young kids, then I would probably say wax is not the best because as lovely as it is, it's not going to protect from heat and the old man is making you spring clean. Tell him no, reject that idea. Say, I'm sorry, it's, it's a no. Don't spring clean. Get yourself around here and get, get some painting done. Um, yeah, so it's not going to protect from, from, much water resistant i mean if you spill some water on something that's waxed and you very quickly wipe it up you'll be fine if you get any sitting water on a piece or any kind of heat coffee cups plates those kind of things like on a dining table i would probably say that it's not the best thing to use so i do a lot of decorative pieces which i am very fortunate and able to do because i'm a dixie bob brand ambassador and i kind of i'm able to show all the kind of decorative effects and that's kind of my thing and i've always kind of done that i don't do a lot of commission-based work i don't do um you'd love to see the peacocks fund out i actually met one on the way to school yesterday it crossed my path and it was absolutely huge and it had all the tail feathers and this time of year they shed all their tail feathers and people in the village collect them. And, and I've actually got some. I know they're supposed to be bad luck, aren't they, or something, but they're so pretty. I don't care. Um, so, yes, top coats exist because some pieces need higher durability and protection than other pieces. So if you are using something for a dressing table or a vanity and you think it might have things like perfume and cosmetics on, those kind of things can eat away very, very quickly at most top coats. So you want the most durable top coat. So the most durable top coat that Dixie Bell do is Gator Hide. And very similar to that is something called Terra Tough, which is a very new product that has been specially developed to work with Terra Clay Paint. However, they're very similar. They're water resistant and they're both heat resistant. So great for coffee tables, dining tables, dressers vanities those kind of things um they are amazing products i personally love terra tough can't get enough of it i've used it a lot and i've used it on this little piece that i've just done on my youtube channel it goes on like a dream and it's very very durable so in answer to your question i've gone about this a very very long way i'm sorry i told you i rub it a lot don't i um wax would probably not be suitable for a chair seat hi ashley Thank you for catching me live. Glad, glad you're here on this beautiful sunny afternoon in the UK. It might not be elsewhere, but it is, it's lovely here. Um, <clears throat> for anyone that's just joining, I do have a little bit of a cough and I've also got peacocks in the background. So that's the weird noise. Dixie Bell does sell top coats. So they sell Gator Hide. They have Terra Tough which is, like I say, it's, it looks and, and acts very, very similarly to my youtube site is faff designs so f a double -F, f designs um i i can write it in the comments after i've finished actually if you want me to pop a link to my youtube channel after this i can do that um so terra tough and gator hide are the most sort of toughest if you like then underneath that you have your clear coats and you have different finishes depending on how you want your piece to look. So they do clear coat gloss, clear coat satin, and clear coat matte. So they've all got slightly different sheen levels depending on your preference. And then kind of, I guess, underneath that, you've got your waxes 
and they're fine for you know if you've got a, a hall table a console table um a decorative piece of furniture a chest of drawers something that's not gonna have a load of abuse thrown at it basically so i have got i'm sitting looking at a little drinks trolley it's super cute i can't wait to give it a makeover but people are going to be storing alcohol on it and the last thing that i'm going to put on that is wax i am going to have to give that some kind of durability because i sell all my pieces and i want to know that that piece is going to be okay for the use that it's intended so it really really depends I wouldn't advise wax for a chair seat, no. If it's something that's a decorative bedroom chair, you're not going to be putting anything on it, not, not people's actual behinds, then yeah, wax it. But if it's going to be used every day, no. You're only going to have to keep re-waxing it. And that is the thing. If you are using wax as a, as a top coat, do be aware that you might have to re-wax, depending on the usage you may have to reapply wax because it is something that kind of gets kind of gets worn away whereas a top coat won't a top coat is is there and it's done so i hope that little ramble helped so we've got clear wax on here the next thing i'm going to do and brown wax goes really nice with pretty much every single color the other thing people ask me a lot about is what color waxes go with what color paints there is no right or wrong answer for that, really. Um, white and grey waxes are going to give you kind of a beachy, kind of faded look, whereas black wax is going to be, obviously, it's very extreme, depending on the colour that you, the colour paint that you use it with. So it just depends on the look that you want to go for, really. Um, if I'm going for something really funky and industrial and vibrant, then I might use some black wax to give it real kind of definition. But if I just want to antique a piece and give it a little bit of softness, brown wax is probably the one that I use the most. So this is, again, it's another natural bristle brush. Um, this is very well used and I do allocate one of these to brown wax. I wash it every kind of few usages, if that's even a word. If not, it is now. And again, it's a it's a natural bristle brush, but obviously you can see it's a sm much smaller brush. So that allows me to put the put the brown wax in a little bit more carefully than what I did with that brush. So that's obviously a lot bigger. That's great for speed, just giving it a quick coat of clear wax. This is a little bit more precise. So Obviously, you can see that looks that looks really nice as it is. But if you did want to add a little bit of something, you do know your stuff, Clark. Cheers, Amber. I have I've been doing it now. I think I'm am I am I is it seven years I've been doing this? I don't know. I don't know, but it's it's a while. And I do it every day as well, don't forget. So I use the brush sideways for kind of spindly details like this. And you want to get right in all the detail. Don't worry if it looks like a mess. We're going to sort it. We're going to sort it. And don't forget, it's water-based. So if you hate it, you can just grab a baby wipe, wipe it off, and it'll take it back to the paint. It will wipe off the clear wax as well, but it will take it back to the paint underneath. And that is the beauty of Best Ang Wax. It's really easy to kind of undo any mistakes whereas an oil-based wax a traditional oil-based wax you've got to get the white spirits on that bad boy to take it off so this is this is a really good wax to use if you're a little bit nervous so get it all in the kind of recessed areas now i've got probably a little bit too much product on there so i'm just going to take it off <coughs> excuse me i'm going to take it off on that drop cloth and then, without putting any more products on, obviously I've just taken a lot off, but I'm just going to kind of diffuse that line. You see how it was kind of like brown wax and then just stopped. I'm just going to diffuse it with the same brush, almost like a dry brushing technique. And again, at the bottom as well, just so there's no kind of harsh lines. It's super easy to do. And if you like the blended paint look but can't blend paint, this is a really good option because it kind of gives you that shadow 
without having to crack open another colour of paint. So I'm just going to take it slightly up the candlestick and then slightly towards the base. Okay, so we've concentrated the dark wax around here. Again, I, you can do the same. I'm going to do the same up here, but I'm just showing you that small, small bit there because I don't want to keep you too long while I'm rabbiting on. Then what you need is some lint-free cloth, a rag, microfiber cloth works really well. Anything that isn't going to shed on your piece. You don't want to be picking little bits of fluff off your piece because this wax is obviously going to be tacky. It's just been applied. This is the stuff that I use. It's um, it's like a paper towel, but it's super heavy duty. But I do use microfiber cloths as well. Um, old pillowcases, as long as they're not going to shed on your piece or like an old brown t-shirt or an old black t-shirt <coughs> excuse me this cough needs to leave me it's driving me nuts so then dry clean cloth and all you're going to do is just lightly rub over now you can take as much as this off as you can take as much off as you like if you want it fairly um sort of as it was you don't really have to sort of wipe it back as much if you just want it quite subtle then you can well you can basically wipe as much off as you like so that's basically it that's how easy it is and then if you decided you wanted to add a little bit more you can just go in with that dry brush and just add a teeny weeny bit more to that bottom edge because I think that's just going to make it look really three-dimensional like that and a bit around the bottom like that okay so hopefully you can see the difference if you can't then that was a, a wasted half an hour so the lighting in here is ever so strange and it always, always looks weird on camera, but I'm hoping that you can tell the difference. So this is just had two coats of antebellum blue, nothing else done to it. It's kind of, it's kind of flat looking and that is the finish that you get with chalk mineral paint without it being top coated or waxed. It is flat. This one has obviously got the clear wax, which is giving you that really nice sheen. And then we've got that three dimensional detail down here so it just helps bring it to life and gives it a little bit of something extra and if you ever feel like you've painted your piece and it needs something extra it could be wax might not be but it could be wax and I actually don't think a piece is complete until it's been it's had a little bit of coloured wax put on it there's not very many pieces that I have done without adding wax of some variety and you can also create your own coloured wax. So if you want a specific colour and it's not in the sort of, um, in the best time wax range that already exists, what you can do is get a little bit of clear wax, scrape it out with a spoon, add a smidgen of paint in whatever colour you want and you've got your own coloured wax. You can do that. It just goes on ever so slightly differently but it does work. I have done it many times before and it works absolutely fine. So hopefully that helps you a little bit with wax. Now, obviously, because I have done it on a three dimensional piece like this, where it's got detail, it's kind of easy because you know where you want the dark pieces to sit. You know, you want to push back the, the sort of recessed areas and you want to highlight the sort of higher points. If you are doing that on a completely flat piece, you still want to add some shading or a little bit of definition or whatever. But say, for example, you're doing it on the top of a piece that in the video that I've just posted on my YouTube channel, it explains how I do the top of a piece that's incredibly flat and there's no detail to it. You can do it on a flat piece as well. So <coughs> that explains that you can do it on all different types of surfaces it doesn't have to just be decorative like that to to basically have some 
some kind of shading. So, and obviously the color that you paint is gonna be, it's gonna be very different depending on the, the color that you paint and the outcome. So if I was painting this white or a neutral, the contrast between the dark wax and the paint color would be bigger. Um, it's just that I'm using blue. I'm gonna cough again. <coughs> so sorry. This is the longest that I've spoken. I reckon in the last two weeks since I've been ill. <coughs> um, yeah, two weeks I've had this. It's driving me nuts. Um, so the colour that you paint is obviously going to be a, a big kind of, it's going to change the look of it completely. Like I say, if this was a neutral colour or red or yellow, yellow, the piece that I've just done is yellow with brown wax on it. Um, you might be able to see it actually if I take this take this it's only a little table and I did a little bit of crackle on it as well if you're interested to see how crackle works with Tara come down no you can't I can you I'm gonna have to the tripod there we go so that's the piece that I've just finished it's got a little bit of decoupage on the drawer and loads of brown wax absolutely loads so I went to town on that one but that's kind of my thing. Um, I'm now going to top coat. So with this, if you wanted then to top coat over the top of your waxes, you need to leave this to dry. And that can take different amounts of time depending on how thick you've applied the wax. So if I was top coating this, I'd probably leave it a couple of days at least before I added a top coat because what happens is if you top coat too soon, you're going to reactivate the wax and it will just smudge. So you want to leave it until it's completely dry. And you can tell it's dry by touching it. This feels tacky because it's just been applied. Um, what you want to do is, is give it a buff after about half an hour. And that's going to take any excess off and speed up the drying process. It also does buff it a little bit more shiny. Um, and that's going to take off the excess product. That's already feeling like less tacky already. But yeah, if you're going to top coat over Best and Wax, you want to leave at least a couple of days, at least, if not longer. It sprays beautifully um, and that stops it from kind of disturbing the wax underneath. Or just make sure that it's not, it's not tacky anymore. Because like I say, you can disturb, with it being water-based, you can disturb... The, the coloured wax effect that you've put on there. So I will probably be top coating these because they're candlesticks and I don't want wax running down the piece and not being able to come off. So I will probably top coat these with Terra Tough because it is my go-to. It's my go-to top coat. Um, it's, a, it's a great product. And Amber can testify that because you've just put it on your your dining table, haven't you, that you, um, that you made. So yeah, it's a really good product. So, I hope that helped. Sorry about coughing. Um, hopefully, next week, I'll have less of a cough than this week. That would be nice. It'd be nice not to be ill. That would be lovely. Um, yeah, she's a, lovely, she's a lovely dining table. It's, it's, you've done a grand job of that, Amber. Um, and that's it. So, as always, if you are interested in any of the products that I have seen today, um, you can... Oh, the comments go too quick. I've just seen a comment about a dining table and it's gone. So the comments on YouTube flash up and go very quickly. Uh, you've got to be like lightning to get those comments. I don't know why it does that, but it does. But if you, if you, if I missed your question, drop me a message. Um, <coughs> do you have a can of Terra Tough? Of course. It's right, is it there? It's here. It is, is it? Yes. <clears throat> it's here. <clears throat> it's nearly all gone because I love it. Um, it's so much like Gator Hide, but it's not as shiny as Gator Hide. I think it's got slightly longer open time, so you can lay it down. And Gator Hide tends to go quite sticky quickly, which is obviously because it's drying quickly, whereas this doesn't. And like I say, it's got less of a sheen which I personally like. Again, it is in the video that I've just posted on my YouTube channel this morning on the yellow console. This is pretty much the only thing that I use um, on Terra Clay Paint. 
and I've started using it on other projects as well because I just absolutely love it. Um, <coughs> yeah, great if I'm not ill next week. That'd be that'd be lovely. Um, so, as always, like I say, if you um, want to know a little bit more about any of the products that I've used or want to go and grab them, make sure you hit up your local retailer, support your local retailer. Um, you can find your local retailer by going onto the Dixie Bell website and entering your location and it will tell you where your local retailer is. And also lots of retailers do offer shipping as well. So make sure you do support your local retailer. And I'll be back next week with something different, different content. If you've got anything specific that you want me to do, please drop it in the comments and I will be happy to oblige if you can fit it in and find something to do that particular technique or show that particular product on. I'm more than happy to do that on my lives. And thank you for watching. Thank you for spending 36 minutes of your time with me this morning. And I hope you all have a lovely day. I'll see you next week. Bye.